Hey guys, it's Finn. Today I'll talk about the backpropagation algorithm with you. And the backpropagation algorithm is used for making the network actually learn some data. And I'm going to show you how the algorithm works. And I'm going to um, to give you a ex basic explanation on why the algorithm does what it does. So um, the first thing you need to know is what learning means for a network. So um, let's take some input data. And what we did in the previous videos was uh, we calculated the feedfall process. So we had our input data, we had some wakes, and we had some output data. Uh, learning means now that uh, we want to uh, change the output for our input uh, so, the, uh, so as we want. So for example, we, we got some target values. This is often referred as T or just target value. And we want to change our output data to these values, so 0 0.3 should become a uh, 1, um, but we do not want to change our input. The only thing that we are allowed to change is the wakes. Um, and the I'm going to give you multiple explanations, so I'm, I'm going to show you the mathematical and the intuitive explanation. And I'm, start, I'm starting with the intuitive way. So the intuitive way is, let's take a network again, and we have some input data. We have some output data and we have our target values. And the you can think of it this way. Um, each neon has its own output, obviously. So this neon has an output and we um, this neon has an output and we are going to take the wakes times this um, output and apply the sigma function again and so on. That's what we did. Um, but each output might be incorrect. So um, you can see the, the last output so of these neurons, they are obviously incorrect because our output is 0 0.4, but we want 0 0.9. So let's say that we got some error of in these, uh, at these neurons. The most intuitive way for um, telling our, ner uh, our error at these neurons is just by subtracting the output uh, minus the target value. So uh, 0 0.4, minus 0 0.9 in this case, and 0 0.6 minus 0 0.1. Um, this is the most intuitive way, and this is actually correct. Uh, it's not totally correct, but it's slightly correct. Um, I'm going to show you why. And the next thing that we need is we want to calculate the error signals of these neurons, and then of the previous neurons, and so on. Uh, we cannot calculate the uh, error signals of these neurons, because uh, there hasn't any calculations happened. So uh, there, there is no error. We talked about the input layer. And we talked about that the uh, output of these neurons are just the input data. So the input data, they are correct. We cannot change them. So um, there, there are no error signs of these neurons. Um, so I think of it this way. We got these output neurons and we got these wakes. And we know that um, the higher this wake is, the higher the influence from this wake, uh, from this error is on this error. So the higher this error is, the higher this error must be if this weight is high. So um, if this weight, uh, if this error is high and this weight is high, this error must be high as well. And this uh, comes for um, each connection. So uh, the, the most intuitive way is again, take the sum over uh, the weights times the output error signals. Um, Oh yeah, like this. So um, we got uh, the uh, um, error of this neon, and it's we are going to take this wake times this output error sign, and this uh, wake times this output error sign, um, and it looks something like this. So um, just it's not written correctly, but um, it's just for understanding. And if you would go to Wikipedia or wherever, you will find some formulas that look um, slightly different. They look something like this, but the good thing is that. Um, you can ignore the first part, it's just too complicated to... We, we, we don't need that, and we don't need the red part yet as well. So, um, this just means the error sign, and for each output neon, we're going to calculate OJ minus TJ. That's what we got, so this one is correct, and the error sign for each inner neon or hidden neon is the sum over the um, error sign in the next layer, times the connected weight, and this is correct as well. But um, I said it's correct, but not totally correct. So we have to um, take care of the red part as well. 
And the good thing is this is very easy to calculate because we got the output of each neon. And we, we're just going to take OJ times 1 minus OJ. Uh, so let's make a quick example. So uh, we're going to calculate these error signs by taking OJ minus TJ. Then we are going to the, uh, and we're going to um, take the uh, OJ of this neon times 1 minus OJ. And I'm going to tell you that this is the derivative of the sigmoid function. And I, there's no intuitive way of explaining why we are going to use this. Uh, you need to watch the mathematics explanation to, to uh, understand why we have to use this. Um, so yeah, we, we got OJ minus TJ and we're going to multiply with the derivative, so not the output, but the derivative of this output. Um, then we're going to the previous uh, layer and um, we can calculate, we can start with the first neon and we got the uh, weights times the, this uh, output uh, error sign um, added up with the weight times this error sign and so on. Um, and we're going to uh, multiply it with the uh, derivative of this output in this case. Um, and we're going to do this for each uh, unit in this layer. And if we got these, we can go to the previous layer and do the same again. Um, the next thing is, um, we, we want to actually update our wakes. And I think there's also no easy way to, to explain this. Um, I've just found these formulas on Wikipedia again. Uh, the explanation on Wikipedia is quite good for that, um, but the formulas look something like this. And um, I'm trying to explain this whole thing later, but um, let's just, I'm going to explain you what the, how the formula works. So this part can be forgotten as well again. We don't need that. Um, we just need uh, the delta wake from i to j. So delta wake means that uh, we want to calculate this and add this thing to our current weight from i to j. So um, for example, we got we are in this uh, layer and we want to calculate the uh, neon from i to j, for example. So from zero to zero in this layer or in this layer. I'm not sure if it doesn't really matter. So um, what we want to do is we want to take minus uh, the the delta is uh, minus this is called eta, this little n, and this is referred as the learning rate. The learning rate is just a static number, so we can just choose one in this example. Then we got o, uh, the, we got the output of our. Um, so if we uh, take this weight, we would have this output, and we got this o j minus t j part again, um, or this this part if we have an inner neon. And the good thing is this is just the error sign, so we already calculated this whole right part. So the only thing that we need to uh, calculate for updating our wakes is minus a static number times the output of a neon. So um, for example, we are updating this weight. We would take the error sign of this neon times the output of this neon times our learning rate. And um, this is subtracted from the weight, the, the current weight, and this is this is how it works, and this is very easy, I think, to apply later on if we are going to program it. Now I'm going to try to give you the mathematics explanation, and this is a little bit harder to understand, but I will try my best. So let's go back to the start, and um, the the most important thing that you need to understand is that we um, that that our network is not just a network with some neons and so on. It can be understood as a function. And our function would look something like this. So our function of our input and our wakes is equal to our output. Notice that um, when you have been in school or something, you just have like one value for i, one value for v, uh, for w, and uh, one value for y. But in this case, we have multiple values for y. So we got a vector. Uh, we got a vector. Um, our input is a vector, and our wakes are uh, is is a vector as well. Um, but this does not change a lot. You just need to know that. So it's just we don't have only three values. We have like a lot of values. We got a lot of input data. We got a lot of wakes. We got a lot of output data. Um, but as I already said, this is not random. We can calculate this, and we already did this. And um, 
let's let's make a quick example on building this function so that you see that it actually is a function. So I've chosen a little network, and um, the output of this network is just um, a ve is, is a vector with only one number. So um, we can say that this neon has only one one uh, output number, but it actually is a vector. So a vector of only one number. So uh, we got input of 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, wake 0 0.3, 0 0.8, and 0 0.6. I ignored the bias in uh, this video because uh, the bias is just a weight with standard standardized output of 1. So we can just ignore that and apply the same formulas later on. So um, the output of this neon is equal to the sigmoid function of uh, this neon. And the sigmoid function, this, uh, the, no, oh, wait. The output is the sigmoid function of 0 0.6 times this output. This output is equal to the sigmoid function of 0 0.3 times 0 0.1 uh, plus 0 0.8 times 0 0.3. Um, so it would like something like this. I haven't calculated this because I was too lazy to be honest. Um, but you can see that uh, this is a function in a function in a function and so on. So if you would have more layers, would have um, more brackets and so on, and um, this is just just uh, uh, have this in uh, in mind. This is uh, what we need later on. Um, the last thing we need for applying the backpropagation algorithm or understanding it is we need an error function, um, and the error function looks something like this. So we got a one half of t minus y squared, and um, t is our target value again, 1 half is just 1 half, and y is our current output. So uh, this function determines how good or how close our output is to our target value. Uh, and the idea is that we want to reduce this function. So the smaller e is, the better the data is learned in our network. And uh, y is equal to the function. Um, and we got um, some static numbers, for example, the input is static. We cannot change this, but we can change the wakes. So um, the basic idea is that we want to get our error function with respect to each wake to update the wake. And um, I'm not going to make a full mathematic explanation on that because Ryan Harris did a great job on explaining this in two videos. And it's really, it's really good for understanding the mathematical way and uh, I'm going to show you uh, the basic idea of the mathematic explanation. So um, let's say that we got our function or our network, but we only got one single wake. Uh, this is not, this is not, I mean, nev no network will have only one wake, but we are going to have a network with only one wake in this case. So, uh, and we got the error sign. So let's say that if the wake would be uh, one, our, er our error would be uh, zero. So if we would, if our weight would be one, our output would be our target output. If our weight would increase, our error would increase. Same with when our weight would decrease. And now the idea is that um, we have an initial weight of, for example, two, and we we need the slope of our function. And um, if we would, um, this is expressed by e of um, e with respect to weight with our, to our weight. So um, this is just um, our derivative, and um, if we would know this, we could we would know the slope of our function. And the idea is now, um, if our slope would be positive, so we would be going up, we need to reduce our weight. And if you have the formulas in mind, you have seen that uh, we had our for updating our weights, we had minus eta times the output times the um, error sign, and this minus. Is because we are going to downwards if this is positive, or upwards with our weight if um, this is negative. So uh, we are positive in this case, so we want to reduce our weight. Um, so we are going downwards. We are going to reduce our weight, and um, this is pretty much what we want for our network. Um, the learning rate determines how far downwards we are going. So, for example, if we would have if we would calculate this, and our learning rate would be way too big. Our um, weight might jump from 2 to maybe ma minus 2. This is 
totally not what we want. This might uh, increase our error. So we want a small learning rate like 0 0.5, 0 0.3. So we are going to go downwards in small steps. Uh, so when we apply the backward regression algorithm, we will not be able to do it in only one step. We might need a thousand steps for um, to get our uh, output closer and closer to our target output. Um, so let's do this in high dimensions. So let's say we got two wakes. Uh, I found this graphic because um, I, I, I really like it. But you need to ignore the numbers, they just do not match. Uh, there, there are no, there's no error that is higher than, I don't know, maybe 10. So an error of 1500 is nearly impossible to reach. So just ignore these numbers. So uh, you know that the higher, so uh, if this means a high error, so if our weight would be equal to 10 and 10 maybe, our error would be really high. And if it would be like minus 10, minus 10, or 10 and minus 10, it would be really low. So let's take our initial weight again, and it's some, somewhere at, I don't know, maybe 5 and 5. And uh, we see that if we want to reduce our error, our wakes need to go that way. But um, our network doesn't know that. So we want to calculate um, our error, so our mean squared error, or just E, with respect to our weight 1 and with respect to weight 0. And if we would have this, we could, the network would know if uh, where to move, so uh, this is often referred as the gradient, if we would know this. So uh, the gradient determines how, uh, where we can go downwards in our, um, in our, uh, in our function, I would say. So uh, we would have uh, the error with respect to each weight, and this would tell us how to move in our network, uh, or how to move the wakes, and yeah, this is pretty much the algorithm itself. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comment section or um, just message me. Um, I tried to give, uh, I tried my best, but I I probably didn't do it um, as well. So uh, just let me know uh, if you have any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video where I'm going to code this.